Hello everyone, this is the Mining Geologist and I'm back again with another very exciting and very informative tutorial. So, in this tutorial we are going to take a look at the basics of implicit modeling in Micromine. So the good thing about Micromine is that it gives you two options for geological modeling. So you can either go with the classic way by uh, creating, uh, you know, sections and digitizing different uh, strings and create wireframes manually, which I don't advise you to do that, or do it with the implicit modeling tool that Micromine offers. So uh, Micromine, actually, if you go to the uh, menu here, the implicit modeling menu here, you'll notice that we have like uh, some, uh, a lot of tools like for fault, for vein, for contact, for intrusion. So it really depends on the, the, the lithology or the domain that you want to create. So if it's, uh, if it's an intrusion body, you need to use this one. If it's a vein, you need to use this one. And if it's contact or like basic stratigraphic layers, uh, you can use the contact. Of course, if it's a fault, you need to use the fault option in here. So all of these are actually covered in the course, but in this tutorial, since we just want to, uh, you know, see the basics or how Micromine works uh, in terms of implicit modeling, so we are going to cover the contact, but they are pretty similar. You notice that in the uh, course, and uh, I explain each one of them individually. So the link to the course is going to be uh, in the description below. Also, if you wait and you watch the full video, you will see in the end I'm going to show you something that is just uh, amazing. So uh, please stay to the end of the video, stick to the end of the video to see what it is exactly. So, um, so I'm not going to show you actually how to create a drill hole database and do all of these uh, colors uh, by uh, lithology because I already covered that in a video and I'll try to leave the link to that video in the description below and you can go and watch that video if you wanna uh, do exactly what I'm doing so this is the the these are actually the drill holes displayed in 3d and now we need to do is to go of course you need to have a drill hole database and we need to go to contact Okay, so the first thing we need to uh, load that drill hole database. This is actually the drill hole database that I've created. And if you want, you can filter, you know, some drill holes or uh, apply some filters in here, but we're not going to do that. So in this drill hole database, basically, we have like three, uh, three tables. We have the color table, the uh, geology and uh, the uh, as the survey and we don't have an essay one but that's an interval file so the interval file could be either geology or essay so basically what you can do is you can model grades so you can create you know domains that represent like high grade for example or low grade or whatever so it it's really up to you so it's really up to you what you want to create so in our case we are you know, creating lithological layers. Okay, so just let me see one thing here. So uh, I want to model this uh, one, which is basically F1. So let's go. And then you load that geology table in there. And then inside that uh, geology, basically you have the borehole ID, the from to lithology, X color, uh, Y color, and, and Z. So this is basically not always existing there in the what you need is these uh, four, uh, you know, uh, columns. So in our case, the lithology, we, in the lithology column, we have all the different lithological layers intercepted by each and every single one of these drill holes. So we pick that one, and you can see that Micromine is going to populate these. So basically, uh, so let me get this back. So this is what you get. These are the uh, lithological layers that we have. Uh, the unique lithological layers that we have in the in that column lithology there so these to be excluded so what do we want to model let's say that we want to model the F1 and that's exactly how to do it so you pick the formation that you want to model and you click on this one this arrow and you will load that include so this is what we are going to model and if you want to ignore something so all you have to do is to move this for example there and 
uh, it's gonna be ignored so for the surface so what kind of surface type so do you want to model the roof or the do you want to model the um, I mean, like, uh, do you model, what, or model, want to model the roof or the floor or the middle, which means the middle of that uh, formation. So basically, this is it's going to create a, some sort of a surface that goes, uh, you know, that as if you're just taking the uh, roof points in every single drill holes and you're creating a surface, you're interpolating them, and you create a surface out of that. Okay, so, and then... Uh, let's take the uh, roof okay and since since uh, the F1 is actually the, the the bottom one we are interested in modeling the surface that represents the roof other than the floor so the floor is gonna be basically probably a flat surface and we're not interested in that okay so here we create an intercept at the color that's obvious and we create an intercept at the end of the hole so it really depends on you whether you wanna you wanna you want these or not so intercept uh, to model you can uh, choose uh, all or you can choose the first point or the last point so input points so if you have like additional points that you want to include you can load these points and they are going to be included in the interpolation but we're not going to do that so here the um, you can make the uh, interpolation whether standard fine or super fine it really depends on your uh, computer and what you want the model to look like so I really advise you to start with a standard one and then if you want to refine the model and you know that that's exactly what you want so probably you can go to fine or even super fine so the minimum curvature so this is you can play around this parameter and see how it actually affects the shape of that uh, that uh, you know formation okay so um, this one the surface control so for example let's say that we have a drill hole in which we don't have this specific formation you can use sur surface control so when the intercept is missing what do you want to do you want to place it above the uh, surface or below it so uh, you can use this one if you want. So basically, it's going to add a point in here that's going to be above the uh, the drill hole, and this is going to make the interpolation goes all the way up here. So this is going to be useful, especially when you're doing uh, wireframing later on, because like I said, in the, uh, or uh, I don't know if I said that or not, but like for example, in GeoModeler or Leapfrog, you can just define all the different you know uh, formations and lithological layers and the relationship between them and the software can you know um, cut these uh, different wireframes based on the uh, chronology of the deposit that you've already defined but in these mining packages this kind of option is not available yet so you need to just you know create uh, single wireframes and cut them or use the wireframing boolean option to uh, cut them manually so so this could be uh, useful if you want to do this and if you're working on a complicated you know deposit so let's just ignore that for the moment so here this is the extent of that layer you can calculate that automatically and it's gonna give you all of these but if you wanna you know somehow uh, make this you know a custom you can go and edit that here if you want okay so let's calculate that automatically and leave it the way it is now for the output you choose the uh, this the type basically what is the type is so you have some sort of a, a triangulation databases you can create your own triangulation database so think of them as if they are just folders in which you store different wireframes so you have a folder called mineralization in which you store all the different mineralization uh, you know wireframes you can have a folder called DDM in which you store all the different topographies that you have and they it's it's the way Micromine actually stores the data and uh, organize them and here this is the name of your wireframe in our case we're gonna call it F1 because that's the wireframe or I mean like that's the lithology that you want to model and you can choose the color that you want let's keep it uh, red and the standard that's the quality if you want ultra quality or 
uh, standard or high, whatever you want. So that's up to you and up to your computer. So here, this is you check this box if you want to close the wireframe at the bounding box. So we have, uh, if you've seen here, when we wanted to edit the extent, so as if we have like a box. So this is going to close the wireframe at the bounding box. So it's going to uh, go to the edges and close that wireframe. And this one will generate a complement solid. So which means that, so for example, the top of this formation ends in here. So it's going to create another wireframe that represents all the rest of the different formations. So that's also can be used to, uh, you know, to cut wireframes or to use it for the Boolean to get the the right shape of the uh, formation. So this is the snap tolerance. This is uh, the tolerance that, uh, you know, how Micromine is going to snap to these points, how, you know, uh, how close the snapping is going to be. So the tolerance in our case is going to be 0 0.1. So you can also discard volumes less than the values that you, the, the value that you define in here. And you can check this box to auto load it. So whenever Micromine finishes uh, the interpolation, it's going to be just loaded in the screen. So this is how implicit modeling works in Micromine and it's not really overwhelming. You can see that it is really simple and uh, uh, in a moment you'll see also that it, it is effective. The only thing that I don't like about it or I think that the Micromine guys are really uh, you know awesome and they're working on this and uh, they will make uh, this feature available hopefully in the upcoming version which will allow you to compute you know uh, different formations at the same time so let's run this and see what we get so let's replace that so it could take some time based on your uh, computer so you can see now we have a box and now you're gonna be thinking hey what is this don't worry this is actually two different wireframes the uh, complement wireframe and the wireframe that represents the F1. So if we hide the complement here, you will notice that we have that. And now you understand what is the complement. And we've chosen to get the surface of the roof. And here is the uh, surface. This is the surface that represents the roof. Now uh, you can choose the... Uh, the floor if you want so for example the next one you can choose the floor and then these surfaces could be useful to like cut uh, the other wireframe so for example if you are going to create the next one and in some uh, areas it goes down below this uh, surface so you can use this one with the uh, wireframe uh, boolean or interactive boolean to cut it out and then if you work on this a little bit, you will get the model that you want. So, uh, for people who actually stick to the end, and I wanted to show them something that it is actually amazing, and uh, I want to see, for people who actually watch the full video, and they are really interested, I would like you to comment below, what do you think about what I'm going to show you right now? Because it's something, if you guys are interested in, I'm gonna make it like I'm gonna make a full course about it and I think this is gonna change actually how companies work so have you so as you can see this is the first F1 formation so take a look at this do you think they're similar this is the same data set the same drill holes so we can go and uh, cut it out if we want and you can see that they are pretty similar so this is basically the same f1 formation and this is all done in python i did this myself you know uh i've coded this uh, script to do implicit modeling so you can just do the exact same thing that micromine did but we did it with python and it is pretty fast and you can also calculate the volume the tonnage and now I'm going to add some more features to make this, you know, uh, do what GeoModeler and LeapFrog does and what Micromind uh, still uh, don't do it, which is compute the whole uh, geological model at once. 
So if you guys are interested in uh, making your own tools, your own geological modeling software without buying, you know, expensive mining packages. And the good thing about this is that you can add the features that you want. You can fix the things that you think they are not right. So this is really amazing. And I believe that in the future, I'm going to be using my own tools because you know, some of you might be thinking, but we're not programmers. I'm not a programmer too. I'm just a geologist. So, and I was able to create this. So if I was able to do this, then you're able to do this also. And I'm going to be showing you how to do it and how to do more than this, because this is just, you know, a simple thing that is related to the tutorial. And uh, I would love to see your feedback, guys. So, with that being said, I hope this was informative as always. Uh, make sure to subscribe and hit the like button if you liked this video. And if you want to suggest more videos or more topics, please let me know also in the comments below. And uh, until then, um, see you next time.